Welcome back to A Closer Walk. I'm Irving Kimball and I'm your facilitator for our Experiencing God series. Today we are going to be talking about returning to God. Uh, and it's found on page 250 in your member guides. And our memory verse for this week is Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. Uh, return to God and he will forgive you and establish your fellowship with him. Uh, sometimes we drift from God and uh, if the truth be told, as believers, there are days and perhaps uh, even longer periods of time when it seems like we are moving away from him or he mo he's moving away from us. Well, these are the times that uh, a believer lose their intimacy with him. Uh, these are some challenging times for us because uh, we seem to be, when we depart from the intimate intimacy of God, uh, we don't uh, have the evidence of his presence in our lives. And we can tell that uh, in several different ways. Uh, you can tell you're losing intimacy with God when you no longer hear from God. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 17 talks about uh, the fact that uh, you, when your heart turns away from him, you no longer hear him. When your priorities are shifted, when you're, uh, the things that are most important to you uh, become something other than him, uh, all of a sudden you're not hearing him as perhaps you used to. Uh, the other it, uh, indication of losing our intimacy with God is when we no longer have the joy that we once had. You've heard the phrase, when you lose your joy. Well, John chapter 15, verses uh, 10 and 11, uh, lets us know that Jesus said, if you, if you obey me, if you obey, obey my commands, uh, or, and that your joy will be full or complete. So as we abide in him and as he abides in us, he, he gives us that joy. And when we no longer have that intimacy with him, we no longer sense the joy that he affords our lives. And oftentimes uh, we blame it on other things, but it, it has to do with our relationship, our obedience to him. Another indication that we are losing our intimacy with God is uh, when we don't produce spiritual fruit. Uh, Jesus said in John 15, 4 and 5, he said, If a man abides in me or remains in me and I in him, uh, then he shall bear much fruit. And then he goes on and said, And that fruit will remain. Uh, so that when we're no longer producing spiritual fruit, uh, no longer uh, sharing the gospel, no longer uh, being a part of somebody else, knowing about Jesus, and no longer sharing uh, our story so that others will come to Christ, we begin to lose our intimacy with him and we lose our ability to produce spiritual fruit. And then the fourth thing that uh, gives us an indication that we're losing our intimacy with God is when we no longer have victory in our lives. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, talks about uh, in the Old Testament that God said to the children of Israel that uh, the Lord will cause you to defeat, to defeat uh, your enemies. But if you lose uh, your perspective with him, then he no longer will cause defeat of your enemies, but you'll, rather your enemies will defeat you. You see, one of the culprits of intimacy with God is the root cause of sin. Uh, sin robs you by breaking your fellowship with God. Uh, our, the, the verse that we oftentimes remember is 1 John 1 and 9. Uh, many use that verse and, and think he's talking to unbelievers, but he's actually talking to believers when he says, uh, if you confess your faults, confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Uh, you see, sin is that which separates us from fellowship. It causes us to lose fellowship with God. Let me just share a passage of scripture that speaks to uh, our intimacy with God. Um, we find in Second Chronicles, uh, when the, uh, Solomon was uh, seeking God on what God wanted him to do in terms of building the, the temple, uh, here's what the Lord said to him in, in uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 7, beginning at verse number 12. He said, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. And then he goes on in verse 13, he said, If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, 
or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name or humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. You see, the way back to God and his intimacy is, first of all, humility. Humbling yourself uh, before God. The scripture lets us know that if we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, he will lift us up in due time. But humility is key when we come before God. We also need to employ prayer uh, when we are in need of restoration of our intimacy with our Heavenly Father. Uh, he said uh, to Solomon, if my people would pray, would humble themselves and pray. And then, of course, to seek his face, to have a, a genuine desire uh, to be close to him again, to, to move toward him. And he said, if you, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Uh, then to turn from our wickedness. He said, turn from our wicked ways. Uh, that means to repent. That means to recognize that there are some areas in your life perhaps that uh, you need to address. Uh, a lot of times we know uh, the areas that are causing us uh, to drift from him. We know the things that we have done that, uh, that is not pleasing in his sight. You see, the, here's some application to that biblical truth, that spiritual truth uh, concerning our intimacy with God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says that uh, we are to guard our heart. He says, watch over your heart with all diligence, uh, for from it flows the springs of life. Uh, out of the heart flows uh, the essence of our life. And so he said, guard your heart. That means be careful what goes into your heart and your mind. Don't allow certain things to, uh, to enter in uh, through uh, what we look at, uh, what we listen to. Uh, you have to be careful because whatever goes into uh, the heart, uh, it can affect and defile the man. Proverbs 11.14 says, Where there is no counsel, the people fail. Surround yourself with godly counsel uh, that will warn you and encourage you. Uh, you don't want to surround yourself with, uh, with someone who won't speak the truth in love. Uh, have the people around you that would dare to tell you the truth. So in summary, a couple of things i just like to leave you with. One is return to God, and he will forgive you, and he will reestablish you, uh, and he will uh, give you the fellowship with him that you so desperately need. Number two is that revival. When we hear the word revival, what it really means is that the life of God returns to your soul. It revives us. And we need to be revived on a periodic basis. Uh, don't think that uh, anybody escapes uh, the, the waning of his intimacy. Uh, but it always can be revived with him. And then number three is confessing and repenting and returning to God is good. We ought to do that. But prevention is better than cure. Thank you for joining with us. I trust that uh, during these final weeks that you uh, have been experiencing God in a, in a new and a profound way. Share with us by way of our Facebook uh, or our email address or of our website and let us know how your experience in God is, is going. Um, and I trust that uh, you will be uh, seeing him in a different way, in a different light, and having a more intimate relationship with him. And until the next time.